Hey guys, I'm Joshua Vitovic from Vitovic Arts, and today I've got a special model. It's my previous character for the campaign that we've just completed. So, here he is. His name is Gilfric Dunderbad, and uh, he is a dwarf, believe it or not. He's the tallest character in our party. Uh, well, he was the tallest character in our party, but he's a dwarf, and he's in a mech suit. Now, I know what you're thinking, this doesn't really make sense for D&D &D to have, but uh, there's actually a race or a class called the Artificers. I am terrible at pronouncing that, I'm not sure if it's art Artificer or art Artificer, but that class enables you to have like a bit of an Iron Man suit, so I made a little dwarf's Iron Man suit, and uh, here he is, and this is how I made him. So let's go check it out. So if you've seen any of my previous videos on making the Iron Harvest mechs, you might recognize some of the modeling techniques that I use here. This is over on Maya, and uh, it's pretty much just uh, extruding and keeping things quite hard-edged and, you know, putting in, like, just crazy stuff like rivets and pistons and all the kind of things that you would expect to see on some kind of mechanized droid uh, thing, <laughs> yeah. Now one of the things that was a little bit difficult to do with this model was make it seem fantasy-esque. Because it's a mech, uh, it's kind of untraditional to have uh, mechs in fantasy, but one of the main things that I used as a reference was Skyrim's uh, mechs, which are those living machines that were built by the Dwemer that uh, defend the cities of the ancient dwarves. And I, I wanted to, to be honest, I wanted to just rip it off entirely, but at the same time I wanted it to be my own little unique design. So I changed things up and uh, I made it more stunted. The Dwemer mechs are quite elegant and tall, whereas these guys are very stunted and they've got the short legs and long arms, just to make it look a little bit more uh, of my own design. I didn't entirely uh, rip off the Skyrim mechs, I just use them as inspiration. Now one of the other key things I wanted in this model was to make sure that it was functional or like semi-functional. So I put in some designs and made sure that parts weren't just like magically rotating on, you know, pivots and, and you know, uh, blending into itself or if it was to rotate it, it wouldn't just like pass through itself. It would actually be uh, functional. I mean, it wouldn't really because uh, it's, it would be too difficult, but um, I wanted to make sure that there were spaces for the model to move and to not interject with one another. So one of the cool things with this model I implemented was axes that are inbuilt into the arms. So I wanted the axes to like fold out and be able to fold in and uh, also like fit in the hand so the actual hand could hold it. So this is probably one of the most complicated things I worked on with this model. Uh, I eventually got it working, but it was a little bit of a headache. I did kind of have to change the entire way uh, physics works. So there is a tiny, tiny bit of uh, models passing through each other, but that was also to help with the printing phase. So the more hard edges you keep on these models, the more it looks like a mechanical build. Now, if I was to do this and want it to look a little bit more organic, I would have gone over into a sculpting program. Now, I know a lot of people can sculpt hard edges on ZBrush, but I cannot for the life of me, so uh, I'm still learning a lot on ZBrush, and um, I have recently started sculpting stone and things like that there, which is really awesome, but once again, stone is more or less organic, it's just a different kind of organic. So, if you're gonna make hard edges, I pretty much always take models into Maya. Even if it's like just a sword or something, I will sculpt it in ZBrush if it's a, if it's a person and they've got a sword, 
I'll take them over into Maya and sculpt the hard-edged parts, even armor and, and things like that. Just because I'm probably more comfortable with Maya as opposed to ZBrush, but it's completely optional. Whatever program you use to make your models, it's up to you. Uh, I mean, you don't have to make models to begin with. This model is completely free on Thingiverse, so you can just grab it and print it up and use it however you want. One of the other interesting things that I wanted to have with this model is to make sure that the parts were interchangeable. So I wanted to have different arms for different purposes. So I made the arms have the axe in and the axe out and uh, folded arms, so like just a normal uh, outstretched arm and then a folded in arm. And then I had a set made for wielding a gun which is ridiculous considering the size of this guy. This gun is pretty much as tall as a human being, so <laughs> you can imagine uh, it, it's pretty big. But the other really, really cool feature I had implemented into this was the fact that there is actually a little dwarf inside the mech. Now, he's covered up by a face mask, uh, or like just a face plate that has like a long beard and all that kind of stuff. It's designed to protect the wearer of whoever is in this, um, but it can also fold up. Now, I did kind of learn a bit of an issue with this. Uh, 3D printed things are delicate, so this guy is very delicate, and I learned that by dropping him on hardwood floor. Uh, so, be wary with your models after you've made them and painted them, make them look pretty. His faceplate didn't protect, well it, it, it protected his face, but it broke. So for this model showing, uh, it is kind of only just holding together. But I did, uh, in the painting phase, sh uh, you can see it uh, open and close, which is really cool. And because it's 3D printed, I could just print another face mask if I really wanted to. So it's not all doom and gloom, you can replace parts at your own whim, it's really cool. Now I did a lot of drawings of mechs beforehand, and like I said, I used the reference of Skyrim to kind of base, or just have a basic idea of how mechs could look, like dwarven mechs. And I used uh, Google and I was looking up a whole bunch of stuff, and I think it's really important to make sure that you draw models before you just get into them, because you get more of an understanding of, of what you're going to do beforehand. And with this model, very specifically, uh, it was extremely helpful because I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have any concept art to base it off or anything like that. So uh, I just drew up my own stuff and I liked the idea of it ultimately and I went for it. Now, like I said, this model isn't for everybody, but I think it's a really cool basis for an artificer uh, dwarf. You could scale it up and say a dwarf made it for you or something, um, but the end game is there is a dwarf in there, so uh, you're gonna have to change it up or get someone who knows Maya to change out the driver inside if you want to change that model. Now I really love it when people work on these models beyond what I give them, and uh, you're more than welcome to change this model up to whatever purpose you see fit. And uh, if you do, make sure you post that on Thingiverse so I can check it out. And uh, if you make one of these for yourselves, make sure to print it up and post it over on Instagram, if you use Instagram, that is. Uh, I really love seeing people's models and I kind of really want to see people's interpretations of this and what color schemes they go for. And I, I really think there's potential to start some sort of dwarven mechanized army with these guys. Uh, I think it'd be really cool, um, but this is just the first of, you know, some sort of dwarven constructed army. It would be pretty cool to field a bunch of these guys on the tabletop. Now I printed this on the Photon Resin printer, and when it came time to painting these, I sort of rushed it once again. I didn't let them set properly in the sun, so... Uh, we have a bit of an issue where if it's not entirely cured, it remains sticky for a really long time. Uh, I would say indefinitely until you remove the paint and reapply it. 
Uh, I may have got lucky and um, not had a very thick coat of paint and I stuck it out in the sun and let it sit for a while after it was painted, but I definitely 1000% recommend you sit these out in the sun or if you have a UV box, use it and uh, let, the th let the resin cure before you start painting it. Don't get overexcited like I do because um, you'll end up having to do more work than you initially started. Now I've gone and used the paint scheme that I've done with all the other Dwarven stuff like the Dice Tower and the Dwarven Book and I've gone with that gold with the oxidized greeny blue in bits uh, and I'm really happy with how the end product looks. Um, the dwarf on the inside, I've just given him an orange beard with, uh, you know, cream skin and he's got these little goggles, so I gave him little white dots and uh, he, he looks pretty cool in there, but you're not going to see him unless you show that off. And I think that's probably one of the coolest things about this model, and you can surprise people with it, the fact that you can just open it up and there's a little dude in there. Now, like I said, this guy is pretty tall for a dwarf, and uh, he's going to need a large base as well. So, I think this is a 30 mil base as opposed to the 25 mil, which is for the 28 millimeter characters. It's a bit confusing, but it's a larger base. He won't fit on a small one. Now, I'd really love to see what you guys do with this, and it's completely up to you what scheme you paint him. You could paint him identical. Uh, he, he's a really cool model for a dwarf artificer artificer <laughs> so hopefully some of you guys see fit to use this because um, I think he's a cool model and yeah he's completely free over on Thingiverse so go check it out in the description below now huge thanks to my patrons over on patreon for supporting me and uh, it's it's been a really awesome past couple of uh, weeks I've just been working on dwarves and you guys have been really supportive so thank you very much. If you want to support me further on these videos, uh, you can simply hit the subscribe button and that's more than enough. But if you want to support me further, you can head over to Patreon and you can pledge a couple dollars per video and it goes a long way to helping me pay for things such as the bills, which are always a looming concern. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, here is the Dwarven Artificer. So, Get printing, and as always, stay awesome everyone, see ya.